Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about um, rectangular, which is a plus bi form, which is equal to r e to the i theta, which I usually call polar form, which is equal to r cis theta, which I usually just call cis form. Um, and then two kind of fun, interesting results that you uh, can get from this. So uh, first thing we need to do is we need to know a bunch of things. And hopefully these are mostly review because I'm not gonna go into great depth on it, but um, if we start with a plus b i, we need to be able to calculate r and we need to be able to calculate theta. Um, and the two things we're gonna do in this, uh, r is actually equal to one, so it won't really matter that much. But in general, in case you got here for some kind of uh, actual instructional material, uh, r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Uh, that's called the modulus of the complex number. Uh, it's also the absolute value of the complex number. Um, and I just call it r for the complex number. And then we also need to be able to find theta, but as with most things, uh, you know, tree in the plane, what we do is focus in on a reference angle and then we uh, make corrections based on a uh, quadrant. So I'm gonna say theta prime, the reference angle, is the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of the absolute value of B over A. And then you figure out what quadrant you should be in and you just kind of fix it. Okay, with R and theta given or found or whatever, we can write A plus B I as, um, so it's gonna be equal to r and then the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta, which is a giant pain in the neck to say, which is why uh, more often than not, I shorten that to a plus bi is equal to r and then cis theta. So you have to remember what cis stands for to use it correctly. So it's cosine plus, so it's a plus sign, cosine plus i sine theta. Um, so cosine theta plus i sine theta. That theta goes with two different functions, so it's kind of a messy notation, but it's not uncommon, like people use it. Um, okay, so you might notice cosine theta plus i sine theta looks like another formula that you've run into several times, probably, hopefully. So cosine theta plus i sine theta is actually Euler's formula. So cosine theta plus i sine theta is equal to e to the i theta or sometimes theta times i, depending on like what's going on and how it looks. So from this form, you can uh, derive a lot of rules, like multiplying complex numbers, dividing them, raising them to powers, which is what we wanna do here, uh, because then you're just using basically properties of exponents. So for the fourth thing we need to know, we need to know if z is a complex number and we do z to the nth power, that's the same as raising e to the i theta to the nth power. And now it's just properties of exponents, so z to the n is e to the i n theta. So it's really i times theta times n. The order doesn't matter, but you usually group it so it's i kind of like hangs out and then n theta. And the reason you want to group it that way is because when we convert it to the other form, the i kind of almost disappears, right? So it's z to the n is cis and then n theta, right? Because it's the argument of e to the i argument, let's say, is cis uh, argument. Okay. So, there are two kind of fun examples that I like to do with this. The first one uh, is to look at negative one to the negative i. So this is, I'm choosing a very particular problem to do, but it's negative one to the negative i. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out what's going on with negative one. So I'm gonna write that in terms of e to the i theta. So I'm gonna draw it. Negative one is just right there, right? It's on the real axis. So I actually know it's one unit away from the origin. So I know that r is one, and then it's on the negative x-axis, which is just theta equals pi from like all of the trig you've ever done. So I can actually rewrite it as negative one is one cis pi. And then I can write cis pi, so negative one equals e to the pi i. All right, once I've done that, I can go back and kind of simplify this thing. So I'm gonna replace negative one with e to the pi i and then that's to the negative i, which becomes e to the pi negative i squared because uh, power to a power, you multiply the exponents. And then uh, i squared is negative one. So we get this. And then negative negative one is just one. So it turns out that this whole thing is just e to the pi. So the quantity negative one to the negative i apparently is equal to e to the pi. So we have this, 
And then what's really surprising is if you grab a calculator and you calculate that, you get e to the pi is approximately 23.141. So negative one to the negative i is approximately 23.141, which is just like a crazy result. Um, so I think that's pretty fun. Uh, basically, these when you raise things to the i power, you get kind of like strange results. So the next one that I want to do is just i to the i power, which is also kind of a weird idea. Like you think about it and you know, if you just sit down and think about it, you're kind of like, I have no idea what that would be. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rewrite i, but I'm rewriting the base i, not the exponent i. So I'm plotting it. It's just one unit up on the imaginary axis. So I definitely know that it's one unit from the origin. And I know that from all my trig that that's definitely pi over 2. So I can rewrite i as e to the pi over 2 times i which is kind of weird. It's like uh, there's two i's in there and one's an exponent. I'm like That's just how it works, right? Because we followed all the rules. So now we're going to replace our base i with this. So we have the quantity e to the pi over 2 i raised to the i. Ugh. Okay. And then uh, power to a power, you multiply the exponent. So that's e to the pi over 2 i squared. And then i squared is negative 1. So that's e to the pi over 2 times negative 1, which is just e to the negative pi over 2. Okay, so again, we got a real number, which is kind of weird. Uh, it's a real number with all these like crazy transcendental irrational numbers just hanging around in it. So i to the i is e to the negative pi over 2. And if you grab a calculator and punch it in, it will tell you that's approximately 0 0.208. All right, so those are two kind of like fun results that you get from this. Uh, I always think it's nice to just do uh, sort of interesting things once you learn this uh, before you get into doing other types of problems. I hope you found this helpful and interesting and good luck.